I'm delighted to have uh, a brief chance to make a comment on the, this motion and the report on engagement with, with the investment funds. And I, first of all, again, I'd like to uh, uh, commend uh, Deputy uh, John McGuinness, the Chair, and the Joint Directors Committee on Finance, Public Expenditure, Reform and Taoiseach, uh, for bringing this matter to the attention of the full House uh, and for, for publishing this short and, and um, you know, very important report about how we, as, as representatives of the people, are treated. I think all of us, over the last month or two, We've all probably met, um, you know, uh, uh, a good few constituents who were absolutely stunned to find uh, that their um, mortgages had been transferred from a permanent TSB uh, to uh, um, a vulture fund to a non uh, to a, a um, to, an, to a non bank entity, um, and, and people, in fact, an incredible distress minister. And I know you probably met them yourself uh, in um, in, um, in East Cork. Uh, incredible distress about what will happen for the future and, and if there was any you know, history uh, where, where families maybe out of work got into difficulty with mortgages and so on. Uh, and that's the, the reality and when you look at the report of course of the, the, the statistical release of the central bank uh, on, on 7th of September, you know, it confirms the reason, the, the very good reasons why people have such uh, anxieties uh, because if you look at principal dwelling uh, homes, uh, the percentage of mortgages for example in arrears over 720 days. Um, while well, the banks are responsible for 72% seven, of those, and I believe the banks, it should have been their core role as, as pillar banks to work out those arrears uh, with the, with the uh, mortgage customers. But unregulated um, entities own 18% of those loans, uh, and, and uh, non-bank entities own a further 10%. And if you look at the principal uh, uh, domestic home or the principal home mortgages in arrears of over 90 days, for example, uh, while well, the banks own 75%, again 30%. 15% are owned by unregulated uh, entities and 12% uh, by non-bank entities. So, uh, I mean, uh, there are a lot of our fellow citizens who are expecting us tonight like under, uh, under the leadership of the chair of the finance committee to take urgent steps about this and, and Minister Darcy says it's regrettable. It's regrettable that, uh, that uh, these companies didn't come before the Finance Committee, uh, and I'm, I'm a former member, uh, Minister of the Finance Committee. Um, it, it's not regrettable, it's totally unacceptable. It's just unacceptable, and it's an insult to this House and to the people who sent us here that that should be the case, that Deputy McGuinness and his colleagues should not be able to invigilate these companies. And if there's a need for legislation, let's legislate. We, we, you know, we stayed up all night two or three times, or more than two or three times in this stall and in the last stall to regulate or to, 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 to uh, bring in uh, uh, and vote on uh, you know, terrible austerity measures. So why, why don't we take the same, why isn't there the same sense of urgency in, in this regard? And I noticed that uh, the, the Minister, uh, um, when he was here, and I know he's probably busy, uh, Minister Stanton, but he said, um, as you know, there are already compelability powers available to Oireachtas committees in certain circumstances under the House of the Oireachtas uh, Act, um, uh, Inquiries, Privileges and Procedures Act uh, tw uh, 2013. And then he goes on to say we should avoid debating that today. But the reality is, of course, uh, you know, we did have a proposed amendment about compelability because of our colleagues on the Public Accounts Committee, the most important constitutional committee in this House, which looks into state spending. Uh, and uh, to, to give the doll in the Oireachtas Committee compelability that was brought in by your austerity government minister. Uh, it was around the same time as we wanted to abolish uh, Shannon Darren. Uh, but the, but the austerity, austerity government it made no attempt uh, to convince the public of the utter necessity of compel compelability powers as is needed indeed in this matter. So I'd like to strongly agree, therefore, Cahirlock, with the conclusion in section 13 of the report, uh, where the committee states. Um, uh, that uh, the uh, failure or the legal, the, the legal lacuna in relation to the central bank and the vulture funds, that this uh, gap must be plugged uh, and that we have to bring in legislation in this regard. It represents a gap in the current legislative framework. And Section 16, of course, rightly uh, concurs with the Governor of the Central Bank, Philip Lane, holding that vulture funds, and, and uh, Governor Lane has said this, that they have a social responsibility to be accountable to Parliament. And that being the case, uh, we shouldn't even be 
happen to have this debate uh, tonight. And as I said, with over 18,000 Irish mortgage holders, customers of these unregulated unreg funds, with a value of, of almost four uh, billion, uh, you know, there's no question that such a large body of our fellow citizens, uh, you know, expect us uh, to be able to regulate one of the most important um, areas of their lives, namely the, 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 the mortgages on their own homes. Um, the consumer protection, of course, the regulation of credit servicing firms 2015 does provide for how credit servicing firms are regulated. But it's worth noting, as outlined in section three here, that people whose loans are sold from credit servicing uh, firms to unregulated entities, and I quote, uh, maintain the regulatory protections they had prior to the sale, including the protections provided by the central bank statutory uh, code of conduct and the code of conduct for mortgage arrears. We, and we saw, however, as I've said earlier this summer, the great distress and worry caused by the pro uh, project loss uh, sale of around uh, the portfolio of around 10,700 10, uh, properties. Now, when I asked the minister, I think, on the 7th of September, uh, he told me that he expects the central bank's report on its review of the code of conduct on, mor on mortgage arrears uh, by the end of this month. So I'd just like to ask the minister, or Minister Darcy, uh, is that report still on schedule? Uh, are, we, are we going to see this, this review? Uh, which you might come back to, Minister. And another uh, uh, parliamentary question of the same date informed me that the Minister and his officials had met with the Chair of the Supervisory Board of the ECB and had discussed the treatment of split mortgages as non-performing loans and requested that they would be recategorised. But it's a sad indictment, uh, Cahirlach, of the lack of autonomy that the European Banking Authority uh, gave a strict European-wide definition of NPLs, uh, which means that certain uh, restructures are, are deemed to be non-performing loans, even if customers are meeting the revised payment uh, schedule. And uh, as I've said, we've, we've all been contacted and are in close contact with so many upset uh, customers uh, who feel great anxiety and distress um, uh, at this particular time. I'd also have to say, Cahir, look, that I want, I'd like to agree, of course, with many constituents who strongly assert to us as co um, like basic common sense that the securitisation of loans on principal family homes should be abolished and should be forbidden in law in this House. Like, you know, as, uh, as I think uh, Judy, uh, uh, Judy, Judy Garland said in The uh, Wizard of Oz, there's, a, there's an ad at the moment featuring the, the last bit of that uh, film uh, minister, and she says, there is no place like home. And there is no place like home. And the idea of somebody, of you having a contract, and the, the chairperson of the Finance Committee referred to this earlier on, of you having a contract to pay back a debt on your family home, that somebody could sell this, could interfere with this, and transfer it to a non-Ireland-based company is totally outrageous. It's an outrage, and, and it's something that we need to address, that, that type of securitisation. I mean, the securitisation and financialisation of key elements of the lives of our families and citizens is one of the most disgraceful practices of Thatcherism and globalisation since the 1980s. And as Mariana Mazzucato, the economist, for example, notes in her, her uh, famous books, The Entrepreneurial State and the Value of Everything, uh, the national governments increasingly over the last 40 years withdrew from necessary regulatory functions but often in businesses where, which the state itself had established and where the state had a primary interest. And one of our primary interests is to ensure that every Irish family and every Irish citizen has a home. We had, a, we, had a, we had an emotional debate about this on Tuesday night. We're going to have another one on Wednesday. Uh, everybody wants to, to deal with the, the desperate housing situation, homeless situation we have. But it's inc incredible that people, uh, you know, securitisation of family homes is allowed, is permitted, Minister. And that, that, that that's another huge gap in the lacuna. Uh, so as I said, uh, families which are devastated by the recent decision of permanent TSB to offload many of their home loans and some fear of becoming homeless, they're looking to us, they're looking to this House to remedy the situation with, with regard to, to uh, vulture funds, to unregulated funds urgently. And I think the, the Finance Committee has made a reasonable request to us uh, that we shouldn't engage with these funds uh, until the legislation is passed that they will be subject to our regulation and to the regulation of our people that we represent. And Governor Philip Lane, of course, uh, the Governor of the Central Bank, he also has a very grave responsibility in this matter. You know, we've asked him, and I know uh, the, uh, the Chairperson of the Finance Committee has tried uh, with his legislation and so on to advance the situation uh, that, that, you know, that we can protect and keep people in their own homes. But uh, uh, Governor Lane, he refused to intervene in the recent project glass sale and in other sales going back over recent years to vulture funds. Uh, so I think uh, 
uh, restoring the pillar banks to their pre-crash salary and other excesses, which has also been referred to by the Chair of the Finance Committee. You know, it seems to be the key driving force in the central bank's administration of our financial system. But it was us, it was we who restored the, the, those banks, those pillar banks, uh, and, and it is we, therefore, who, who on behalf of our people, uh, you know, have the right to call the tune. As I said, unfortunately, and has been referred to by colleagues, the Fine Gael austerity governments, led economically, I think, by Deputy Michael Noonan, they have embedded the current appalling securitisation culture into our mortgage ma market. And hopefully, in the forthcoming general election, uh, Cahirla, we, we will end this era of non-accountability uh, and shocking cavalier treatment of householders and, and mortgage payers. And we make all bank and non-bank entities subject to the regulation of this House and to our Finance Committee. Thanks, Cahirla. Thank you very much, Deputy.